Okay, I think I'm live. I have a good connection. I hope it stays stays connected through this. Um, hello and welcome. I'll just give it a second. Um, oh, and here's Coco <laughs> coming to join us. Um, yeah, I'm just gonna try to do a video every week just to kind of share my thoughts. I feel like it's necessary for me to, to share my thoughts these days. Um, take it or leave it, if this is for you. Um, yeah, so what is your intuition telling you? I feel like a lot of people, especially in like the spiritual community, always say like, trust your intuition, but what's your intuition? You know, I at the beginning I was always asking myself like, what's my intuition because my brain had so many thoughts all the time about everything because I was watching a lot of tv or listening to a lot of like well at the time like the radio and the news and things so of course my brain had a lot of noise going on constantly and in order to quiet the noise you kind of have to quiet your body and so I came up with a couple things that helped me uh, throughout my day and I am a stay-at-home mom and so I have a luxury of being home and being able to take like 10 minutes out of my day to do something that I could even involve my daughter in I don't necessarily need to be alone or when my husband's not traveling and he's home I can always be like I need some time to myself and do these things to myself so it works for a several different people in different scenarios so first thing is we always have our phones always have our phones with us so regardless of what you do for a living or how you move through the world you can set four alarms on your phone and I found like doing it in the morning when you wake up and then like mid-morning afternoon late afternoon so you can time it out however you'd like but set four alarms just to start and the four alarms are to help remind you that it's time to take time for yourself. Because in order to listen to your intuition, you have to be still. And you have to be tuning in. But most of us are so stressed out or have so many thoughts going through our heads. Um, and of course, speaking from a standpoint of being a mother, I have a checklist in my head constantly about like things I need to get or things I need to do or places I need to be or people I need to call. And so there's a constant stream of to do, to do, get done it, get it done, get it done, get it done, get it done, get on it, get on it, get on it. And then at the end of the day, I'm exhausted and I don't have any mental capacity to do anything. Um, and so finding these times to sit and be still for five or ten minutes, four times a day, it gives me a little respite from that to do. Because I already have it in my schedule. And being too busy, I would again ask you to, to ask yourself this question. If you're too busy to take, you know, four ten minute breaks throughout the day or four five minute, you can even start with five minutes it's are you too busy you know it's a kind of a question of are you too busy and so yeah what's your intuition telling you number one you have to be able to slow down I have notes here that's what I'm looking at you have to slow down and listen and tune in and see what your body is telling you and your intuition because a lot of people say which I personally believe you don't need to believe this yourself um, test it out and see what you believe. I believe that my intuition is like the clear channel of me receiving information from the things around me because everything has life, right? Everything has an energetic quality to it. But if I'm constantly busy, I'm missing those messages. Most importantly, not the messages from the things around me, but my body. What is my body telling me? And that's the most important thing because as a mom, I <laughs> have been indoctrinated into a culture of believing that everything revolves around something other than me, which it can feel like a lot of times that everything needs to be poured into the child. And at the end of the day, I have no, I have nothing left in my proverbial cup for myself. 
right? So having this time to check in and see what my body's telling me or just slow down or just have a minute without scrolling through social media and totally blacking out, but to ask yourself, um, what makes me feel alive? Am I stopping and list? Am I stopping and listening to myself? And if you aren't, then I have some tips on how you can do that. So without getting too long winded, I don't want this video to be too long. So I have six things because I like even numbers, which is why there's four breaks. If you like odd numbers, you can totally disregard some of them, but I like to have even numbers. It makes me feel good. <laughs> and I really like the number six for some reason. So it seemed perfect. So again, five or 10 minutes, four times a day, depending on what your schedule looks like, uh, you can do five minutes one time and 10 minutes another time or 15 minutes, whatever feels good for you. I think 10 minutes is something that's very achievable. Um, and so I like to keep it small and then build on it as I feel more confident in like maintaining a skill or maintaining um, a ritual or a practice. So number one is doing breathing exercises. So my lovely friend Bex taught me this, and it's called a vacuum breath. So a lot of times when we're really busy or if we're focused on other things, we're chest breathing, which is what I'm doing right now. Um, if I don't start with a vacuum breath during the day, I tend to chest breathe and it's really shallow. I also discovered that I tend to breathe more out of my mouth than my nose. So I'm constantly conscious of even just walking around the neighborhood here when I'm breathing, am I breathing through my mouth or am I breathing through my nose? Because the way that our bodies are designed is when you start breathing through your mouth, you're sending a signal to your brain that like, we're really tired, we're exhausted. Something's up, like our energy is expended. And so your body starts to go into like a panic of we need more oxygen, which is why we start like <sighs> heavy breathing, even when we're not running. So making a conscious effort to, and you'll always hear yogis make this, this sound when they breathe in and you're kind of like, it's kind of a sound in your throat. And so uh, that's the first tip without the vacuum breath is to just notice just notice, you don't have to change it. And you don't even have to switch to your nose if you don't want to, but just recognize, are you breathing in through your mouth or are you breathing in through your nose? And then how are you exhaling? And how long is all of that? Does it seem like it's a full breath going down to your belly or does it feel like it's just kind of going here and then coming right back out? Oxygenation of the full body is really important. So a lot of times the oxygen only makes it to the upper part of our body, which is why we have swollen ankles and cold feet is because the oxygen isn't making it all the way down. So it's really important to, to just notice that. So vacuum breath, that's the first thing. Doing some type of breathing exercise. So I'm gonna give you two of them that I like and you can totally research um, box breaths or any type of breathing exercise is really helpful. So vacuum breath, you take a deep breath in and out. Blow it all out. Once you feel like you've gotten all the air out, Plug your nose and create space in your belly while holding your breath still. Your mouth will be closed during this. And then I want you to try to create some space in your belly, even though you've pushed out all the air out of your belly. So you're plugging your nose, you're keeping your mouth closed so that no air gets in. You're going to feel really shrink, shrinked up. <laughs> you're going to feel really shriveled and contracted. So you're going to try to sit up straight and create space in your belly. And then when you feel like you can't hold it anymore, try to hold it, try to be calm, close your eyes because you're going to feel a panic at first, which is what I felt because I'm, I need oxygen. So you hold it and just try to create some space. You'll feel like your diaphragm, which is like right under your ribs here you'll feel it kind of push down. And then when you're ready, after you've held it, so you blow all the air out. Hold your breath. Sit up straight. And when you can't hold it anymore, keep your mouth closed and just let the air come in by itself through your nose. And then again, take a deep breath in and blow out until all the air is out. Plug your nose, 
sit up straight, hold it for as long as you can. And let the air come in on its own. You can do as many rounds as you want. I like to do like six to eight rounds of that because the first couple of times I find I can't hold my breath for very long. Um, but then as I get into the rhythm of it, I find I can hold my breath longer and I feel more oxygenated. I feel like I can take a deep breath and it feels like my, the air that I'm breathing in through my nose is going down into my lungs. Okay. So that's called a vacuum breath. Alternate nostril breathing is another one. I'm gonna go kind of quickly through this one so we can get through the rest. I'm hoping that this video won't be too long. So alternate nostril breathing is taking a deep breath in through your nose and you're gonna make a hang loose sign and plug one of your nostrils and let it out and then take a deep breath in. Plug it and let it out the other nostril. Take a deep breath in. Plug it, deep breath in, plug it, let it out. And you just keep doing that over and over and over again. You'll find that it switches you from like fight or flight into a relaxed, calm state. Your head will feel clearer. You'll feel like you just did a meditation even though it's, it's I say only breath work. I don't mean to say only breath work. Breath work is probably more important to do before you start a meditation than to just try to jump into a meditation when you feel chaotic and stressed out. So number one, that's do breath work. As much as you can, try to do breath work. And these are just things that you can choose from during your five to 10 minute break four times a day. So the second thing is a dance break. This one's really simple. You can put on some music and just dance. And something that I was taught from, from a dear friend, and I believe it was my friend Bex, that animals instinctually, if they go through something that's stressful or chaotic, even uh, dogs are actually a great example. If they start to get stressed out or anxious about something, they shake their bodies. And they are legitimately, it's a physiological response, they shake to help move some of that energy out of their body. And so dancing is really great to connect with your body and to shake some of the, the, for lack of a better word, the shit out of our bodies. Like all of this extra energy that we're absorbing from other people, whether we talk to a friend who's stressed out about something and because most of us are empaths, we tend to absorb some of that energy. And then we feel like, why am I in a bad mood now? I wasn't in a bad mood until I talked to that person. Or someone gives you a look and it feels like you're just absorbing their energy. So sometimes it's good to just shake your body out and dance and sometimes make sound when you're dancing. It's amazing just how much energy you shake off and imagine being covered in mud and shaking the mud off of your body and imagine just releasing all of that energy that is not yours. And you can even say in your head, I release any energy that is not mine and just shake it all off. It's amazing. Put on your favorite music while you do it, do it in silence. It works, I'm telling you, our bodies absorb so much during the day. Um, third one, tapping. So you can look this up on, on YouTube, uh, anywhere really. There are a lot of people that do different techniques of tapping. I just do what feels good for me. So I always kind of start with my lungs under my lungs and I do it for as long as it feels good. I love to do my kidneys and my lower back and I'm just using the pads, soft pads of my fingers and just tapping. I'm just tapping. I like to do it with my eyes closed and try to take some deep breaths. I, do, I love my chest. <laughs> I really like tapping. It feels like it's waking up my body. I like to do this in the morning and obviously I really, really really, really love to do this in the morning because I've been sleeping on one side all night and it feels like it's waking up my body. And I really like to do it on lymph node points. So if you feel swollen in your lymph, um, it's really, really great to do in your armpits. That's where all of your lymph fluid from your face goes into your neck and then all the lymph from here goes into your armpits. So it's good to keep all of that moving Sometimes I give it a little rub, but you can tap anywhere. You can tap anywhere on your, on your face. 
on your jaw. It feels amazing <laughs> on your jaw. And just, I usually just let my intuition guide where usually the places that feel the best are the places that need the most love or places I feel like I really, really want to avoid. I ask myself like, why am I avoiding it? You know, our bodies are super smart. And so tapping, I like to add a mantra in sometimes. I like to tell myself, my body is capable of amazing things. I like to say, I am healthy, I am strong, I am confident, I can get through anything. And just keep saying it over and over again. You could do it with your eyes closed. And it's just ingraining that into my body. I know all these things about myself. However, telling myself these things out loud, hearing my voice, there's a resonance to it and it just drives it deeper into my being. Um, so dance break, tapping. So number one's breath work. Number two is dancing and or shaking. Number three is tapping. Number four is journaling. You can look up prompts anywhere. Um, if you want to go deeper into some things, I'm happy if you send me a message through this video or any direct message for journaling prompts, I'm happy to give those to you. Um, I like to go into inner child stuff, which is like, what am I feeling like if teenage Brittany was here right now, what would she need? What would she need right now? And then I like to just write it down. Or if I could embody teenage Brittany, what was she feeling? What is she feeling? And all these things, especially when I feel like everything is against me, I know that I'm going into a pattern that has been repeated so many times, I haven't stopped to check in with it. So sometimes journaling helps a lot to see the words, to have them written down, to validate myself through writing. So that's a really great thing to do. Just 10 minutes checking in with yourself. What do I need right now? It doesn't even need to be your inner child, but what do I need right now? writing a list out and making sure that you hold yourself accountable to show up. This is probably the most important thing I'll say the entire video is to show up for yourself. Mommy, show up when you're asking yourself Mommy, uh, for something, something that you show up. You. Okay, baby, hold on one second, okay? I put too much dog food. You did? Yeah. Okay, I'll keep Coco up here. Can you clean it up for me? Yes. Thank you. Laney. Um, number five, so journaling, yes, show up for yourself. When you ask yourself, what do I need right now? And maybe you can't fulfill that need right this second, right? Maybe you have to go back to work. Maybe your kid dumps dog food all over the floor. Maybe something happens. I had a bat in my bathtub yesterday. Maybe I can't give myself what I need right now, but I will follow through. Go, go and I will show up for myself. You know, I, I, I have to because I am the only person that is ever going to show up for me, that I can expect to show up for me. Coco, come here. I'm gonna let Lainey clean up that dog food. Okay, so number four, journaling. Number five, meditation and or listening to your breath. So I love, 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 love Entranced Awakening. And I will put a tag to her page under this video in the comments, Entranced Awakening. She has the most amazing meditation tracks because I find myself a lot of times if I cannot get a moment to be still and listen to my breath or my brain is so busy, I can't get out of my own way to do a meditation or backtrack. Not that I cannot get out of my way. Words are very important. In the past, I have felt so busy that I completely disregarded meditation. In the past, I completely disregarded meditation because I felt like I could not focus. And so listening to Entrance Awakenings meditation tracks helps or allows me to focus on me and not get discouraged and not do something that I know my body is asking for. So that being said, her tracks are amazing. Please go check her out. I will put her, her link under the, the video. The second thing is just doing an actual meditation. There are lots of free meditations on YouTube. 
And that you can also just listen to your breath when you feel calm and still. Just give yourself a second um, and just listen or feel the breath come in and out of your body. Another great resource is Headspace. They give you 10 free sessions and you can listen to them as many times as you want. It's completely free. You can subscribe, but um, Headspace is great too because it's a guided meditation and it builds on itself. Okay, last one, singing and or sound. So sound is really, really important to our bodies. We're energetic, vibrational beings. We need to hear our own vibration. So whether you believe you are a good singer or not, singing is a great therapy, is a great act of self-love. Um, and also, so is making noise. So making any kind of noise, humming, singing, any type of ah, uh, mm, trying to make this front part of your face vibrate by saying mm, uh, it sounds crazy. However, it feels amazing when you're finished. So if you would like more on that, I again, I'm trying to keep this video a little bit short, but those are some, some really awesome ways that you can um, get started by taking time to listen to your intuition, to drop in, to connect with your body, to build trust with your body, build trust in yourself because again, it's so busy out there and I'm guilty of it too, just being too busy to stop and listen and um, you deserve it. So please let me know if there's anything I can do to help you. I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, my, I decided to take my website down actually. It's easier just to go through email and um, social media. And so if you'd like to get in contact with me, my Instagram is ascendingmum or sovereignroots.love. I have two pages. I have my business page and my personal page. Eventually those will merge, but right now I like to have two different pages. And my email is sovereignroots, one word, dot love, L-O-V-E, at gmail.com. So feel free to connect with me any of the various ways that I am, I am uh, reachable. And I hope to talk to you soon.